Hello guys, welcome to this session. So let's start the session. In last class, so we were talking about pandas. We have seen some inbuilt functions, right? And today we will talk about some more functions in pandas. Okay, so today we will talk about this project where we will analyze human resource information using pandas in AWS Hitchmaker. And we will learn how to perform some statical analysis on this real world data set. And we will also see how to deal with the missing values because uh, if we have missing value in our data, so that data we cannot pass into a machine learning algorithm, right? To do that, we will get uh, we will get an error. So before implementing machine learning, we have to prepare our data first. So if we have any missing value, we have to deal with that, right? If we have missing values, we have to deal with them. So either we can fill them or we can drop them. We can change panda data frame, data frame data types. We can define a function and apply it to our panda data frame column. We will also cover pandas operation and filtering. And we will also calculate and uh, display the coalition matrix, and uh, Seaborn library to show heat map. So uh, this uh, data visualization part we will cover later, right? So let's see. So let's uh, move on the AWS console. Okay, now it is trying here to open a notebook. So today in Pandas, we will see how to deal with the missing values, how to deal with the categorical columns. Okay, so what are categorical columns? Okay, I'll show you with some examples. Categorical columns in machine learning means where uh, means a column where we have some predefined categories, right? A column where we have some predefined categories. For example, we have a movie data set uh, in which we have a column genre, right? And in that column, we have a uh, we have uh, some predefined genre categories like drama, action, comedy, right, and so on. So if we have uh, such type of color in our data set, so such color, we cannot directly feed into our machine learning algorithm, right? First, we have to convert it into a numeric form, right? So that we will cover today. You can see this column color, right? So in this column color, we have some predefined categories, red, yellow, green, Okay. So if we have this type of column, so the column we cannot directly pass into a machine learning algorithm. Okay. So there is a technique that is one hot encoding. So with the help of one hot encoding, we can convert a category of a column into numeric form. But the main thing here, one hot encoding we can implement if there is no mathematical order between the categories in the column. Right. I mean to say here you can see. Uh, there is no mathematical order between red, yellow, or green, right? We cannot say here green is greater than red, right? Or red is greater than yellow, right? It doesn't make sense here. So one hot encoding we can implement if there is no mathematical order, right? If there is no mathematical order, then we can implement one hot encoding. But if we have a categorical column where we have some order between the categories, in that case, we can implement label encoding. Okay? So, the, uh, so there are two major techniques. First one is one hot encoding and second one is label encoding. You can see in this example, so we have a, let's say we have a column height and we have some categories here, tall, medium, short. Okay? So uh, here uh, you can see there is a order between these categories, right? There is a order between the categories. So according to the order, we can assign them unique integers, okay? But, uh, but here we also have this column color. So in this column color, there is no mathematical order, right? So in that case, we can, uh, here we can implement one hot encoding. And this is the output of one hot encoding. So here I'm going to upload, I'm going to upload a file that is uh, not a PDA to cancel. Okay, let me cancel this. Uh, upload EDA3. EDA2 or EDA1 we have covered in the last session. 
and uh, here we need a data and that is human resource not csv okay and also we need a data where uh, we can implement one hot encoding and uh, so okay let's take this data set train.csv okay now it will take some time or we can also create a text file right and uh, where we can uh, create a data set okay let's say uh, here uh, we have a column uh, student name comma marks comma okay or uh, instead of this data uh, let's uh, create a, a t-shirt data set where we have a column let's say color next column is uh, t-shirt size and next we have a numeric column price here and here we have few values in each column so let's say in the column color we have a value red then we have a t-shirt size let's say large and then let's say price we have as a float value here and uh, let's take another record two and uh, medium and uh, price this then let's take another record color and uh, t-shirt size is small and uh, let's take a price let's take one more red medium and price so we have these four colors okay or instead of uh, uh, let's here uh, keep this value here so okay uh, okay so here i'm going to uh, okay so here we want to keep our empty value right uh, because here uh, uh, we okay because here uh, we also want to deal with the missing values right so uh, in this third record uh, and the price column we don't have any value so save this i'm going to share this data in my day three and the file name is demo dot txt so i'll show you also how to deal uh, how to uh, read the data when we have a text file so i'm going to upload the file demo.txt i know why it is taking so much time okay let's create a new one conda python 3 so i don't know why it is taking so much time okay M meanwhile we can understand what is one hot encoding so one hot encoding is a technique through which we can convert a categorical column into a numeric form but the main thing is uh, we can implement it when when uh, there is no mathematical order between the categories in a column right another option we have uh, we can also implement label encoding right so we can also convert a categorical column into a numeric form using label encoding here you can see we have a column gender so we have some categories here we have two categories male and female right uh, so here we can implement one hot encoding because there is no mathematical order between these categories so after one hot encoding we will get output something like this one right if we uh, if we do have one hot encoding we will get the output something like this one so number of columns in the output of one hot encoding depends on the number of unique categories depends on the number of unique categories in the column so in this column we have two unique categories let's say we are getting two unique columns male and female so in the first row you can say we have value male so in the male column we are getting one right and in the female we are getting zero so one means present and zero means subset. similarly you can see in the next row the value is female so in the female column we are getting one and in the male one we are getting zero right so one means present and zero means subset. so in pandas we have a method that is i think get dummies right and that we will implement for one hot encoding. So we want here kernel this set kernel pandas deal with missing data. So okay, let me import pandas here as pd, and then we can read data. So we have a function here pd dot read underscore csv. But here we can also pass txt file, right? So file name is demo.txt and here we can use separator 
argument and we can just mention the comma because in this txt file the values are separated using comma and we will get the data using data uh, in the form of data frame so df equal to this uh, let's see what error we are getting here unexpected three fields and so four okay let me check uh what error we are getting okay here uh it should be three thirty four point two okay now this remove this line and also delete this file and uh, upload one more time in the same file demo.txt like that so pd dot read csv and the file name is demo.txt and the separator is comma you can see we are getting the output so df equal to now we can display the data okay let me run restart and clear output i know why we are getting two times okay let me also open this one in the next tab so you can see we have column color t-shirt size and price in the column color we have some categories red blue green red right and also in the sorry in the column color we have these categories and in the t-shirt size we have categories large medium small medium and in the price column we have some float values but here also we have a missing value nan right so whenever in our data uh we don't have any value right and uh so we will get the nan in the data frame if you read the data from such file right we will get the nan means not a number and if we are getting nan it means we have a missing value in this cell right we have a missing value here so how to deal with the missing value so we can do one thing uh first let's say how to find number of missing values in each column right so identify missing values missing values so the command is df dot is null so if you run this you can see we are getting the output either is true or false but where we have nan so we are getting here true right in the data frame we have nan here so in the output we are getting true <clears throat> now instead of <clears throat> true and false here we want to display number of missing values in each column so we can just count number of trues in each column right number of trues in each column so we can call method here sum you can see in the price column we have one missing value that you can also see in the state of frame and in the uh, t-shirt size we have zero missing data in the column color also we have zero missing data so, in, so this is how we can find number of missing values in each column <clears throat> next we have two options either we can drop this row or we can fill this missing value here we have numeric column so either we can uh, use a mean or median right to fill this missing value <clears throat> so if you want to uh, let's say if you want to drop this row drop row so df dot drop any we can use drop any so this method basically drop all the rows where we have a missing value how equal to here uh, in this method we have an argument how here we can pass uh, any it means if we have any missing value right it means uh, if we have a uh, uh, even uh, if we have a single missing value right in any column so it will just remove that row entirely right we also have some other options we can also pass here all all means it will remove a row in which we have missing values right in all the columns right in all the columns in that row. so instead of all here we can use and next uh, if you want to save the changes uh, we can use in place option in place two okay uh, let's now you can see now we have three rows right we have row at index 0, at index 1, at index 3. So this is how we can 
drop a row where we have missing value. Next is how to fill a missing value. So I think uh, we have to run this command again. So here, let me write fill missing value. df1, this is df1. And now you want to fill this. So here we have an inbuilt method that is fill any. So df1 dot fill any. And here uh, we have to pass our dictionary. In the dictionary, we can take column name as a key, means column name price as a key. And here we can uh, pass the value right, that we want to replace with an A. So how we can find the mean? So df1 dot uh, column name price dot mean. You can see we are getting 19.90. So here we can pass df1 dot column name dot mean. And also we have to pass here in place argument in place equal to true. Okay, now df1, on this, you can see we, here we are getting mean 19.90 okay, So this is how we can fill missing value. Now, okay, next is uh, here we have two categorical column. One is nominal, right? One is nominal and second one is ordinal, right? So uh, the first one is nominal categorical column means a column where we don't have any mathematical order between the categories. So such column we can call as a nominal categorical column and where we have some mathematical order. So that so such columns we can call as a ordinal categorical feature. So the next thing is how to deal with categorical column, categorical or categorical features. So if we have uh, nominal, if we have a nominal categorical feature, right? If we have a nominal categorical feature, it means uh, no, no order, no order between categories, no order between categories. And if we have ordinal, if we have ordinal, categorical feature, it means exist some order right, between categories. So in the first case, if we have nominal categorical feature, so we can implement here one hot encoding, one hot encoding. And uh, if we have ordinal, so we have to implement label encoding. Right? So uh, we have column color as a nominal categorical feature. Right and uh, t-shirt size we have as an ordinal categorical feature. So first, let's implement one hot encoding. So td dot get dummies. So here we are going to implement one hot encoding. So get dummies. We can call this function and we can pass our categorical column that is here df one then df one square bracket, then column name, color. Here you can see the output. In this column color, we have three unique categories, blue, green, red, right? And the output, we are also getting three columns. Let's save this output somewhere. So res1 equal to this. Okay, now you can see in the first row, we have category red. So in the red column, we are getting one, right? and rest of the columns we are getting zero. Similarly, in the next row, we have category blue here. So in the blue column, we are getting one, and rest of the values zero, right, and so on. So this is the output of one hot encoding, right? This is the output of one hot encoding. So one hot encoding we implement when there is no mathematical order between the categories in a column, right? And label encoding we implement when there is some order between the categories in, in the column. So the output we have stored in into this variable res1. Next, we will implement label encoding 
and the output we will store in the same column. So df1 dot column name t size and that method map. So in Pinoch we have a method map. So this method we can use for mapping. So here we want to map each category in the t-shirt size column with some unique integer number. Okay. So we, we can pass our dictionary here. So if we have category large or if we have category small, so small we can map with a, with a small number, let's say a one. We can also start with zero, one, two, right? Or we can take one, two, three. And uh, then let's say we have category medium. If we have medium then uh, we can map it with two if we have category large so that we can map with three you can see here we have three categories large medium small and the output here we want to save into the same column so let's take here t underscore size on df1 now you can see in the t-shirt size we are getting three two one two right so T-shirt size and price. Now we have got in numeric form. Okay? And the column color we have converted into numeric form and the result we have stored into this variable res1. Okay? So now we will perform here concatenation. Means uh, we need a data frame in which we will store only all numeric columns. So uh, now there is a question that is how to fetch all numeric columns from our data frame right how to fetch all numeric columns from a data frame so df1 dot let's use a select d types here we can pass this argument include include equal to or let's use here uh, exclude equal to here we can pass object data type. You see, if we want to display the data type of each column of a data frame, we can use df1, let's say df1 dot d types. You can see <clears throat> the data type of column color is object. So whenever we have string values, right? Whenever we have string values in a column, so the data type will be object. Then we have integer, then we have float. So here uh, we have just mentioned that exclude equal to object. I think over here we have to pass a list. Okay, exclude equal to object. Now you can see in the output here we have got only numeric columns. Right. So either we can use argument here exclude or we can use here include. This output we can store somewhere numeric equal to. Now we have two data frame. First is numeric, in which we have numeric columns, and another one is RES1, in which we have the output of this column color. Right? We have the one, uh, one hot encoding output of this column color. Now we will do here concatenation. So PD dot concate, and uh, here we can pass. Uh, so concatenation we want to perform between two data frame. First one is res res one, and another one is numeric. Okay, and uh, we want to perform concatenation column wise. So we have to pass x is equal to one. Let's run this. You can see. So first we are getting the output of uh, res one. Then we are getting the output of numeric. So now in this data frame, we have all numeric columns. In this output, we can store somewhere, let's say, final, final data, right? Final data. So now you can see in this data frame, we have all numeric columns. Now this data we can pass into a machine learning algorithm, right? This data now we can pass into a machine learning algorithm because now we have only numeric columns. Right? Now we have only numeric columns. So this is how we can deal with the missing value. And then uh, we can deal with the categorical columns. Right? We can perform concatenation here. Right? 
Okay, the next is so here we have this data, human resource, right? So Matplotlib and Seaborn, both are the Python libraries for data visualization. Okay, that we will discuss later. So now here we will use only pandas. So we will read the data from the CSV file. Okay. <clears throat> now you can also check the data type you can see is data frame head we have seen in the last session so instead of head here let's uh, we want to display the number of rows and number of columns so hr hrdf dot shape we can use shape argument here so in this data frame we have four one four seven zero number of rows and 35 columns the next important command is uh, how to okay uh, so basically here we want to get all the unique values right all the unique values from this column department right in the numpy we have seen a method that is uh, unique right np dot unique right but here in pandas uh, so we can just write hr df dot unique uh, I think uh, 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 hrdf dot column name. I think yes, here we have to pass column name that is a department, and now we can use unique column here. You can see unique. So in the output, we will get all the unique values of this column department. You can see in here we have unique values, sales, research, and development. Also, we have NA. Right? So in this column, we also have a unique value. So if you want to see how many unique values we have in each column, we can just write hr underscore df dot is null dot sum. You can see. So in department, we have one missing value. Right? In uh, now here in education field, we have one missing value. Employee number, we have one missing value. Right? Maximum missing values we have in monthly income three. Right. So this is how we can find the missing values in each column. Okay. So after this here, uh, we want to just count number of unique values. Right. We want to just count the number of unique values. So here we have unique value sales, research and development, and human resources. Right. So we want to just display their count also. So we can use here hr df dot column name department dot value counts you can see uh, we have 960 number of occurrences of this unique value and we have 446 occurrences of this category sales we have 63 occurrences of this category human resources okay so we have three unique values and these are their counts head method we have covered right this uh, this method we can use to display first and records tail method also we have covered we can display last and equals of the data frame mean we can find if we want to get the mean we can call this method here we are getting the mean of each column now we have a uh, method info so if you want to get some information about the data frame we can call this here you can see we are getting information like uh, here uh, non null count so here we have uh the number of rows i think we have 1470 right but here we have 1469 means here we have one missing values right so here we are getting number of counts and here we are getting the data type right and also you can see uh the data type is float integer we have five columns of float 21 column i think of uh, integer and nine of object right so such information we can get using info method how to deal missing data we have just seen some we can call here okay then how to use drop any also we have just seen uh, we can use argument how equal to any in case equal to true now we have number of rules 1463 okay uh, there is one more argument that we can pass here subset right subset equal to monthly income and percent salary hike it means 
uh, we want to just drop a row where we have n a n either from this column or from this column, right? We want to drop a row in which we have n a n either in this column or in this. Right? So we can also indicate which columns we want to drop n a n. We can hit JC find. We can find the mean and fill n a. We have the same fill n a method we can use to fill the missing values. So so data frame then column name, monthly income, and fill NA, right? Another option we have just seen that data frame dot fill NA, we can pass the uh, values in the form dictionary, right? Or we can also use this option. If you want to change the data type of the columns, right? So we can use something like this one, DF hover rate S type. We can use method here as type, and we can pass the here float system code. So we want to convert all the values of, of hourly rate into float, okay? So that's why we are passing float 64. And the output here we want to save in the same column. Now you can see in the info column, the hourly rate and the rate type is float 64, okay? So we can use L type. We want to change the data type of any column of a data. We have the same examples of S type, okay? Now here uh, we want to apply a function <clears throat> on a column. Suppose here we have a, on this function. So let's assume the daily rate has increased by 10%, right? Uh, we want to increase the daily rate by 10%. So we can define a function that increases all the client's net worth by a fixed value of 10%. So here we can take any value, right? So this is a function and we can return balance into 1.1. Okay, assume that net worth increased by 10%. That's why 1.1 we are taking here. Now this function we can use here. So data frame column name dot apply. So in data frame, we have a method apply. Here we can pass a function and that function may be built-in function or it may be a user-defined function, right? So this function we can apply on the each value, right? On the each value of this column, delete it. Uh, first we have here on this one and this one. You can see where is delayed this one, right? Now we are getting these values. Okay, uh, so let's see, initial value you can see 1102. And now here we have got 1212, right? So apply is a method of data frame, right? And this method we can use to apply a function on the each value of a specified column. Filtering we can do here. So here we want to display all the records uh where uh, we have this condition it means years at company greater than or equal to 30 right okay. okay or let's take uh, some other example suppose uh, we want to display all the rows where department where department equal to sales right where department equal to sales so we can just write uh, data frame hr dear then column name department okay and uh, equal to same if you write something like this one here we are getting value true or false but instead of true and false we want here actual row so this output we can pass into the original data frame now you can see we are getting all the rows where we have department equal to sales Okay, so this is how we can filter the records. We can do here filtering. Okay, so these are uh, so this is how we can do here filtering. HR age equal to fifty, right? Where the age equal to fifty. You can see where we have got uh, all the records. We are age equal to fifty. You can see age equal to fifty. Okay, next so. Uh, uh, values that fall between a given range. So here we want to display all the records where daily rate between 800, 850, right? So we can call method between and we can pass a range. So we will get all the records where the daily rate will be between this range. You can see the daily rate is be uh, now we, uh, between this range. If we want to drop uh, duplicate rows, right? If we want to drop duplicate rows, so we can use this method drop duplicate in place equal to true okay uh, let's uh, hr 
underscore df dot uh, duplicate it. Okay, let me run this. Okay. Uh, HR DF. You can see, uh, actually, there is no duplicate, but this is how you can find the duplicate rows. And using this method, you can drop the duplicate rows if you have any. Okay. So, this method we can find to find the duplicate rows, and this method we can find to drop the duplicate rows. Next, so we can uh, read CSV file. Info method we have just seen, we can get some information, the basic information about a data frame. Okay, next, so uh, if you want to drop some columns, employee count, standard hours, over 18, employee number, we can use drop method x is equal to 1 in place equal to 2. I think uh, we have covered this before how to use a drop method. So, drop method we can use to drop a row, right, or drop a column. Or we can also drop multiple rows or multiple columns also. So if you want to drop columns, or oh, you can use x is equal to one, and for the row you can use x is equal to zero. Next, if you uh, here uh, we can just filter the records. So let's see how many employees left the company. So attrition equal to yes. We can see here attrition equal to yes. And if uh, we can also use this type method here, right, to get some static information about the data frame. So count mean, standard deviation, the minimum value, quartiles, Q1, Q2, Q3, right? So guys, we have just covered uh, so many methods of functions of pandas. So whatever methods of functions we have covered, so that are, uh, you can say, are important methods, right? And that we will use also while implementing machine learning. So guys, I think uh, uh, this is enough for the session. Thank you, guys.